pressurized. And, yeah, it's, and uh, NASA claims right. that it rests against the boundary of space that's a 10 to the negative 17 torr vacuum. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the, the atmosphere is, is pretty thin. Uh, and at a certain point, uh, it just gets very, very, you know, it just dissipates. So it, it goes from very thin. It's thick near, thick near the surface, and then it attenuates as you get farther and farther out in space into the vacuum of space. So we got a 14.7. So you're saying we have no barrier between our pressurized atmosphere and the vacuum of space. Exactly. But wouldn't that be a violation of the second law of thermodynamics? No. no. What is the second law of thermodynamics? Uh, I can't remember. So you know that it's not a violation, but then I asked you what the second law of thermodynamics is, and you couldn't tell me well, what the second law well, of thermodynamics I, I, is. I, I know, but I, I, I know what the atmosphere is around Earth. You're, you're sitting here right now, and you're breathing, and if you take out a, yeah, of an course, instrument, I agree. it's 14.7. If you get up to, I think, uh, 67 miles, I believe, is I agree. the boundary reasons. where space officially kind of opens. But you can still see atmosphere. I agree that the atmosphere decreases with altitude. It's a gradient, but that's yes. easily explained by hydrostatics. That why we have a gradient is we live in a closed dynamic system where the gas is homogenous and anisotropic. It's different in all directions and constantly moving around. Yeah, so I'm still asking how you have gas pressure without a container. I just don't have gas pressure. Well, I, I think it's the pressure of the atmosphere. All of it. If you measure the air, it's got pressure to it. I mean, it's got weight. And that weight is bearing down okay, on the gas planet. pressure is defined as gas pressing out in all directions. So if you're saying that all the weight is just pressing down, right. that's right. a violation of gas pressure. Well, I, uh, you know, you, there may be a subtlety that you're thinking about, but... Yeah, know. I know. The subtlety is that space is all fake. Yeah, it doesn't exist. That's why we didn't go to the moon. That's why it's all cartoons. Oh, okay. All right. I, 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 <laughs> oh, you don't want to talk to me anymore, right? Well, I, I, nah, I mean, um, it, you know, NASA, but, but, but a good thing about it, uh, what, what a good thing is, is that, um, you know, in the not too distant future, hopefully in the next four or five years, NASA will again try to land. We man. allegedly went in the 60s when we had turned dial telephones. Right. And, and they, Don Petit, who's a NASA astronaut from the ISS, said, we lost the technology, we destroyed it, and it's a painful process to go the back. Well, it certainly is. I mean, and and you're, when do we destroy technology We ever? don't destroy it. We, we never That's what Don Petit technology. said. I don't know who Don Petit is. He's an astronaut who's been on the ISS. Okay, well, I got it. Is it Petit or Pettit? Don Pettit. Yeah, okay, Pettit, all right. But, uh, you know, hmm? we, when you start manufacturing something, you've got blueprints. You've got designs, but you don't keep those lines going. So go to any industry and talk to them about it. They don't keep technology lines of production or technology that's 20 and 30. Years I'm not old. saying lines of production. He says they destroy. Oh, yeah, the yeah, that's, much more. No, yeah, that's yeah. what he said. No, no, well, we haven't been back in 50 years. I, 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 and yeah. you're saying we need four or five more years to go there. Uh, yes. I mean, right now, if you want to, uh, if you want to go on the NASA website and look for the space system. Yeah, I do. Every launch is parabolic. So the rockets go up, and then they level out, and then they come back down towards their Earth. No, they, they go, I to, watch a, time lapse they go to a certain point, and then the second stage kicks off, and it takes off, and then the third stage, it ignites. And eventually, yeah, you do go into orbit on the planet. So I mean, you're not going up straight vertical, and then all of a sudden, you know, doing the 360. So, right? I mean, you're... you're you're, you're, uh, you're essentially he heading on up into space in a, in a large loping run, and eventually you escape and jettison dead weight and propel into a plane and go forward. 17,600 miles per hour, which is so up. So, gravitational orbit, do you have any demonstration of that here on Earth, or does it just happen in space? Yeah. Well, I mean, you can look at projectile motion. So, projectile motion, weapon, weaponry, orbits, other stuff? No, I'm saying you can look at, at, at launches of, you know, ballistics. Ballistics will give you a certain portion of velocity and range. Ballistics do not orbit anything at all whatsoever. So gravitational saying, orbit is defined as mass attracting mass causing one object to circle right. another object. Right. Can you demonstrate that or not? Well, I mean, uh, 
you mean on ground? Can I demonstrate orbital? In reality, like in, in, in the Earth, like where we live, can you demonstrate it anywhere? Like can you can you go to space and show me? Can I go to space? Have you? No, I haven't. Been. Have you ever demonstrated your gravitational orbit? Well, do you, do you, do you believe that there's a belief on ISS? Science is not a belief. Science is not a belief. I just told you space is fake and violates the second law of thermodynamics. Our discussion probably doesn't work. Because I don't believe in the ISS? How fast does the ISS go? It's over the last 17,000 miles an hour. Have you ever gotten anything past 5,000 miles an hour yourself? No, no, you haven't. So how did the ISS get to 17,000 miles an hour? By being launched on, on rockets to that orbital velocity, and over a period of several years, it was assembled by the United States, by the former Soviet Union, by the Japanese, by the Soviet Union. So hear me on one thing. You're saying that they built the ISS over several years in yes. space going 17,000 miles an hour. Where do they sleep? They, they sleep on the ISS. But they were building it. So how do you sleep on something that you're building? Well, it was built in pieces, the first one. You know, you need to probably look at ISS and they'll tell you about what the integration stage is for. The first piece that you launch was power. So they while they're going 17,000 miles an hour, that right. connecting other pieces to it exactly. in space That's using right. gravitational orbits That's that right. you can't demonstrate. I, I can't demonstrate, but you know, if you won't believe what NASA talks about. Science is not a belief. Science is I empirical science. evidence. Well, get, get, get a basic physics book, and it'll tell you about orbital velocity. Go get holiday. Okay, so basic college physics. get a Mormon book. It'll tell you about Joseph Smith. That doesn't make it real. That doesn't make it true. <laughs> but you're right, because NASA takes all their tax money. They don't want them knowing what's going on, right? <laughs> Well, I guess I, I don't want to ask the people right here, but I bet you, a, a matter of fact, if we ask how many people. Are you going to say here, the B word? I'm going to say if we ask people. Are you going to say the B word? If we ask people, if, do they believe? Believe, the believe. Do they believe? You said the B word. <laughs> yeah, that's that's cult rhetoric. Okay. That's cult rhetoric. Thank you for talking. Just for the record, yeah, I believe in a flat earth too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.